please welcome on stage the next team to present their paper titled The AI Challenge, Picking Up the Gauntlet. Okay, hi everyone. I think we've had two very interesting days of AI where we've been fascinated by the large number of things that AI is able to do for us. And you know, the question really becomes, what is AI? Is it our nemesis or is it our genie in a bottle? How far is AI really able to go in the really human areas of interpretation? But just now, the paper that was presented, you could see how far it could go in the interpretation of facial analysis, etc. But if you take the area of qualitative analysis, which is to interpret emotions, interpret language, etc., how far is it really able to go? And therefore, we went into a complete uh, you know, understanding of uh, you know, how, how is AI really able to do this through a classic blind test? So basically our idea was, let's take a project, let AI generate a report, let a human team generate a report, let's send it to the client in a blind test, AB kind of a test, and let's see whether they're able to see the difference and you know, which do they like better. It's a very dangerous experiment as you may all uh, imagine, you know, because the chances are AI would be preferred to us and where would we be? But you know, that's the nature of the uh, you know, research that we undertook. And also, you know, at the end of it, to see what are the ways in which we can collaborate or ways in which we can harness the powers of AI. So therefore, this is what we did. Uh, our objective was to get a client to evaluate these two reports. What we did first was we did a dry run before the experiment for our internal purposes. Then we actually did the experiment where we sent it off to our uh, client and, you know, prayed after that. And uh, we supplemented it with some desk research and, uh, you know, we spoke to some experts just to get a uh, clarity around, you know, where AI is headed in the future as well. So this is what we did. The first step was our dry run. So for our dry run, we used, you know, you may laugh at us, but we used ChatGPT 4.0, which is, you know, fairly secure as a platform. Uh, we used a junior to middle level researcher team. We didn't take the senior researchers. We took a study that had already been done. Okay, we had a report that had already been generated. It was basically a diagnostics for a post-launch diagnostics for a brand in the food category. And as you can see, we didn't take a simple study. We said, let's look at triggers and drivers and barriers, diagnose marketing mix, identify levers of growth. So we gave AI a little bit of a torture test. We didn't make it simple for AI, okay? So we launched this, and uh, Chandralekha will talk you through what we found through our dry run. So you, over to you, CB. Thank you so much, Shobha. So uh, going uh, forward with our journey with what happened with ChatGPT for us, so what did we do? We just uploaded all the data and we just clicked and GPT just delivered it in like seconds. And our reaction to it was, of course, like we were awestruck and we were like, wow, because GPT very smartly said, yeah, because GPT very smartly said ki the all of these beautiful structures, all of the beautiful themes, and all of the lots of transcripts that you would have taken like a lot of days to go through, I just did it in minutes. And that made us really wonder, ki, okay, what are we doing here then? But this journey was not like a bed full of roses, definitely. So there were hiccups there too. So while carefully reading the data, what GPT had given us, we had few questions for GPT. Like, okay, even if you give us the awesome analysis within minutes, but you have missed out on a lot of information and you have made up a lot of this, so how can I trust you, right? Also, you don't get a lot of the important points and I need to keep rebriefing you again and again and again. Then GPT was too smart and it was like, okay, you give me the right prompts and I will improve and I will deliver, I promise. So, you know, in this dialogue, uh, chat GPT gave us data, gave us inputs. It gave us beautiful, you know, kind of outputs. But a lot of it was hallucinations. A lot of, a lot of it, it made up, trans it made up, you know, quotes, it made up a lot of things on the house. So we found that we had to keep rebriefing it, keep refining it, keep revisiting you know, the original text to find out what was going on. And that actually increased the amount of time that it was taking. And therefore, you know, it, it, therefore the, the issues were that it was surprisingly good at connecting the dots, okay, and it arrived actually at similar recommendations to the human team. But you know, the hallucinations were there. It took a long time to get the report out. 
and there were issues with comprehension of you know various parameters and it was not able to the gpt of course does not read body language i mean that wonderful presentation you saw earlier if you have the right uh, ai tools you can actually get the body language read also this we were not really able to do so then we went into the next step yeah so after our experience with chat gpt the shock and the excitement we realized that maybe and seeing the output that was generated we said maybe chat gpt wasn't the best idea to get into uh, for this experiment we had maybe our prompts were not the best we didn't have the best expertise so we said why not tie up or team up with a professional right someone who is an expert in this domain so we tied up with human x to push ai a little bit and deliver the quality report that we wanted so what did we do uh, we basically picked a product cum exploratory study 14 dis with product experience so it was not the simplest two age bands two sec and just one center objectives were to understand the current habits with the product understand the ideal version of the product and of course you had your product eval versus competitor benchmarks so how did we go about it we created two teams we had the mid junior level research team and we had the human x team right so our mid junior level team sort of briefed uh, human x guys you know on the context of the study objectives output all of that and then both the teams set to do the reports now during that journey there were a lot of iterations right a lot of discussions lot of back and forth because to set context to see that the prompts were in order so that our output was what we wanted in all of this human x was able to turn around the report much faster as anticipated compared to us and then the two word docs that were created that is one by humans and one by the ai uh, folks these were blind right we coded them a and b and they were sent to the client right now the results may or may not surprise you but what do you think was the what happened <laughs> what do you think Okay. Yeah. So AI one hands down, um, ten out of ten on all of these parameters, and our poor humans, uh, that is our team, got a seven out of ten. But one thing we learned in all of this is uh, AI can deliver the best and most beautiful reports, but you need a human to keep the house in order. It just doesn't happen without us. Over to you, Shobha, on uh, what the client had to say and our way forward on. Uh, this so you can see our client was wowed right he was so wowed that after that he in fact called me up to say how wowed he was which was very lowering for our you know self esteem but we listened carefully he said the articulation now le let's understand what is an ai generated report it has brilliant articulation it has beautiful structuring and when you are given a report like that you don't question it right and that's exactly what he said he said the articulation was brilliant okay the nuancing was good because it had this way of you know putting forward uh, things like you know with this sort of uh, cultural nuance you know came this kind of understanding so there was a lot of uh, you know nuancing done in the language it felt very convincing and he says i feel i cannot question this data it's so good it's so clear so you know uh, having picked our self esteem up from the ground Uh, we realized that look if ai fixes this hallucination problem and if a few things are really taken care of this thing can go really far right it can actually do the job of a human that's that's the immediate thing that you think about but there are some you know questions that are triggered one is what the client had raised that with such perfect articulation people will question it without you know will not question it so there's a danger right and i need a human he said who is going to take responsibility for the accuracy of this output because i am going to be wowed i am not going to question it are you going to question it and from our point of view in exploratory studies where we don't have context how are we even going to catch out ai are we going to be able to do it what about biases if we asked gave a prompt in a biased way it was eager to please us ai is built to please humans so you know that was another issue we had third is will junior researchers take shortcuts already doing yes okay so you know there are a few learnings which i feel are very important for us to take on i've heard throughout the last two days that you know ai i have either heard ai is machine or i've heard ai is human we have to understand ai is neither machine nor human it's a different life form 
it has a different language, it has a different set of quirks all to itself. Second is AI is only as good as the human brain that is driving the AI. How well you prompt it, how well you drive it is only going to determine this. Third is you have to train to get beyond your, I don't know if you know the Wizard of Oz story, where the magnificent Wizard of Oz had a human, little human being driving the Wizard of Oz from behind. That's AI for you. It's awe and wonder, but that's all it is. So, you know, the other thing is that, you know, there are certain studies where AI can do really well and somewhere you need a lot of human supervision. So, need for context and whether your parameters are well defined. These are the two, you know, dimensions on which you need to look at it. So, if the need for context is low and the defined parameters are high, that is AI bang on. The other areas you will need supervision. So, in our context today, actually, we can embed AI into our you know, regular way of uh, work. It will give you time-saving, enhanced uh, uh, quality and scalability. And we need to build AI-partnered organizations, so good interfaces. You can pre-decide studies, pre-decide prompts. You can do that. You need AI QC in the company. You may have need a specialized AI speaker, a AI whisperer in your company to talk to AI. Training you need, which you know, I think everybody has talked about training throughout this morning. And you need to make sure that you know, junior researchers don't get into the habit of too much AI. Too much AI is bad for you. So therefore, you, know, you need to leverage AI strengths, but humans have to be responsible as of now. So which is where we learned saying, you know, genie or nemesis, right now genie, in the future, who knows? Thank you. So the first question is, how did you manage the data protection and security concerns on a public platform? And what do you think are the limitations of the platform? See, I don't know very much about uh, AI uh, uh, GPT 4.0, but we were told that it had adequate security and we used it for a very limited exercise. We were aware that you know, we couldn't uh, do it for a you know, vaster exercise. That's not a platform you can use. There are definitely security concerns. That's why we partnered with uh, HumanX because they had all the security and the you know, things in place and we were able to you know, look, take that issue out of question. But I think you know, that everybody is kind of you know, managing through their internal AI uh, you know, platforms and so on that's being developed right now. We have another one. How do you envision the future of creativity as the AI become, becomes more capable of complex thought and understanding semantic nuances? See, I think uh, AI is, a, is another uh, add-on to creativity. See, creativity is, en it is endless. There is no such thing as limited creativity that you, you know, got 100% uh, has been achieved on creativity. So therefore, it is endless. So as it becomes more nuanced, it will become a better partner in, in terms of creativity. So I don't think we should feel threatened. I think we should see it as an added expansion. You know, if your brain is uh, working at 70%, AI helps you to work at 80 or 90%. And maybe, you know, even more. So that's the way we should think of it. I don't think we should worry about that is not a threat area at all. Creativity is not a threat area. It's just a add-on area from a research point of view, at least. I know advertising agencies think otherwise, but. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Thanks.